Greetings everyone. This is a supplemental or a follow-up video to the part 9 of the discrete audio amplifier design and build project. I'm making this video because due to the negligence of me, John Audio Tech, I had condemned the dual transistor CCS because it was oscillating. If the circuit's set up properly, it does not oscillate. So let me explain. Well, you see here, I do have a supply bypass capacitor. However, I am using two supplies. And this one is feeding the base. And this is the supply that the constant current source is actually regulating its current. And I wanted two supplies because I wanted to be able to vary their voltage independently to test the circuit. However, when I set this up, I neglected to put in a bypass around the supply that is being regulated. So let me point you at the scope here and show you what's going on. Okay, so we're looking at the collector of the CCS, or what you would call the output. And, yeah, we're getting that little ripple. So let me uh, take a look at the falling waveform. We had that ripple there as well. If I set here on rising and falling, I can see both rising and falling waveforms at the same time. It flickers a little bit. You would think I could figure out how to effectively use my oscilloscope, but oh well. So yeah, so you can see a little bit of ringing there on the top and bottom waveforms. So let me plug in this capacitor across the supply and look at that cleans it right up if I remove it the ringing comes back plug it in goes away now if you want nice perfect squared off waveforms there's a lot of other things I can do you know there's loop length um, termination resistance and things like that since we are dealing with uh, fast rising edges. But I'm here to mainly show you that the CCS itself, at least in this test, is performing quite well. It's stable. Another test we can do is scope right across the power supply leads. Let me set this up so it doesn't look so bad. Okay. And this is what we're getting on the power supply. So the CCS is putting that on the supply, telling me that, well, there's no decoupling. We need to take care of that. So let's see what happens when I put the capacitor across the supply again. You can see it cleans it right up. If I take it off, it comes back, put it back on. So yeah, it was just a matter of supply bypass or decoupling whatever you want to call it my mistake I am much more confident in using the dual transistor CCS now here's where I connected the capacitor there's still quite a bit of loop length from the negative to the positive supply of the rail you know if I set this up in an actual circuit where I'm using soldered connections you know there's no connection issues it tends to be some resistance between the connections and the loop length and other parasitics on these socket boards I can probably get even better performance so is this the end of testing this not really I would like to do some more tests for one thing I need a signal with higher amplitude you know this circuits gonna be working with you know 60 70 volts and I would like to test its performance with very large amplitude waveforms. I'm kind of limited here with this uh, field tech. It doesn't have a large output. I mean most function generators don't have 60 or 70 volts of output so I would have to create a circuit that would do that just to make sure that this circuit is going to be stable under those conditions. But that wraps it up for this. Thanks again for watching.